madam please start good morning students welcome to model school webinars for senior inter today in zoology session we have beautiful continuation of organic evolution students in the previous sessions prashanti ma'am discussed us and made us know about the things such as origin of life and various theories postulated by different scientists isn't it now today let us learn more detailly how what are the mechanics of the evolution that is what are the forces which affect on evolution so that evolution happens in the world isn't it it may lead to continuation of life it may lead to extinction of life but the process continues isn't it so in this course of evolution many species extinct and new species may arise so what all these f uh, are the forces so let us learn up, learn, learn about all these things and also children a uh, very good and interesting topic one more topic is about evolution of man so from where we have come how the man has evolved also ma'am will be discussing so today we have the same ma'am uh, your favorite uh, g prashanti madam from chikramamdi from karimnagar district okay we welcome madam good morning good morning madam thank you madam yes please continue the session ma'am okay madam good morning dear students today we shall go forward with part 3 organic evolution in this session we will be learning about the mechanics of evolution under that hardy weinberg equilibrium the evolutionary forces natural selection gene flow genetic drift genetic load speciation and origin and evolution of man we will be learning what is population children number of all the organisms of the same species which live in a particular geographical area and which are capable of interbreeding are called as population next is the species that is the group of living organisms consisting of similar individuals just see in this picture students the species of birds insects fishes reptiles mammals etc so different scientists have encoded about the species like charles darwin he made a voyage in hms beagle that is in the year 1831 to 36 to the different continents and the islands and uh, he has written the book origin of species his theory enlightened us about the struggle with the environment and the survival with the fittest gregor mendel he has laid the foundation of genetics he has conducted the experiments with pea plants he has uh, taken seven traits of the pea plant and he has crossed the parental generation and got f1 and he again self crossed and he brought the f2 generation and uh, he ensured that the dominant traits are visible and also the recessive traits are also present later hugo de vries who was the first to coin the term mutation and also the mutation theory he said the sudden chromatical and genetical changes which are called as mutations punnett rediscovered the mendel's laws in the year 1904 he discovered punnett squares he also said not only the dominant traits but also the recessive traits also appear over time he discussed this with his friend hardy who was a good mathematician hardy invented the principle called as hardy principle in the year 1908 later the same principle was also been discovered by weinberg in the year 1943 he also explained about the allele frequency in the population so both hardy and weinberg they discussed a theoretical situation but separately in which a population is undergoing a evolutionary change okay what is hardy weinberg principle we shall see hardy weinberg principle speaks about the frequencies of alleles that they remain constant from one generation to the other in a population in the absence of mutation natural selection gene flow 
but he said certain conditions will be applying what are those that is the population should always be large does always a population will be large children no sometimes we find a population which are little next uh, they should not undergo any mutations but mutations will be taking place sometimes there should not be any gene flow this will also occur next there should not be any a migration and e migration that is there should not be to and fro movement of the people which is highly impossible and also the mating should be random but the mating will always be selective we are human beings we are not animals next when we take that is uh, there should not be any genetic drift there should not be any genetic recombination and no natural selection so these were the conditions hardy weinberg has said that is the large population and absence of mutations gene flow genetic drift natural selection selective mating immigration and immigration should be completely absent then does all these conditions are been meeting no this can never happen so this is said of a non evolving population the hardy in weinberg equilibrium ensures of the two frequencies allele frequency genotype frequency alleles alleles are a pair of genes that occupy a specific location on a particular chromosome and they control the same trait trait means a character for example dominant recessive black white uh, short hair long hair straight hair curly hair etc genotype frequency that is the distribution of genetic variance in a population so this is the phenotype that is the external appearance children here i have shown the hair color body weight etc next uh, when we see here it is the genotype the genetic makeup phenotype the physical appearance hardy weinberg explained the genetic equilibrium in a population so in a single population for a gene with two alleles for example capital a dominant small a recessive that is three genotypes are possible that is capital a a homozygous dominant capital a small a heterozygous and small a small a homozygous recessive for example if we consider the frequency of capital a is p and the frequency of small a is q then what then how can we calculate the genotype frequencies that is by p plus q is equal to 1 so already we have said the two alleles will make the genotype so these are the two alleles which make a genotype so when these have been multiplied we get p plus q into p plus q which is equal to 1 that is we get the binomial expression as p square plus 2 pq plus q square is equal to 1 just recall the mathematical equation children which you have learned in your 10th class a plus b whole square is equal to 1 when we expand what do we get a square plus 2ab plus b square is equal to 1 so likewise here also the hardy weinberg equilibrium that is allele frequency p plus q is equal to 1 whereas over here when we take the genotype frequency it is p square plus 2 pq plus q square is equal to 1 here p square is homozygous dominant and uh, pq that is heterozygous and q square is homozygous uh, recessive then where do we apply hardy weinberg equilibrium that is we calculate the gene frequency allele frequency in a population also the changes in frequencies and also to hypothesize the idea of the population here is a problem children for example in a population of 100 rabbits uh, 24 are homozygous long eared and short ears are recessive to long ears so find out the frequency of recessive allele in the population so here in this problem they are asking about the frequency of recessive allele so the number of rabbits in the population are 100 so the number of homozygous dominant long eared rabbits are 24 so when we calculate the homozygous dominant long eared rabbits frequency that is 1 by 100 into 24 it is 0.24 and the frequency of the dominant allele p which is 0.49 
frequency of the recessive allele. The allele that is Q is 1 minus 0.49. So that is 0.51. So 0.51 is the frequency of the recessive allele in the population. So children, we have studied about the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, which speaks about the allele frequencies and the genotype frequency. Next, we go to the evolutionary forces. What are evolutionary forces? The forces that bring changes in the gene pool of population are called evolutionary forces. These include natural selection, gene flow, genetic load, and genetic drift. First one, natural selection. What is natural selection? That is, the nature selects the best fitted individuals in the environment. So the types are directional selection, stabilizing selection and disruptive selection. So just see in this picture, children, stabilizing selection. That is the population is stable here in the middle. That is the individuals of the average phenotype are selected and not the extreme individuals. And when you take the disruptive selection, Disruptive selection means the intermediate individuals are eliminated and only the extremes are selected. When you take the directional selection, here the individuals of extreme right corners are selected. So we'll look into it in detail, children. First one, stabilizing selection. Stabilizing selection, also called as centripetal selection or balancing selection. Here, the nature selects the organisms. Which type of organisms? That is organisms of the average phenotype. Just see in this graph, children, in this uh, curve, here, the both corners, these are the extreme individuals, and in the middle, average phenotype individuals are being selected. But in this stabilizing selection, only the average phenotype individuals are selected but extreme right and extreme left, both are being eliminated. That is stabilizing selection. So that is called as the middle of the road selection. Just see children, this is the middle of the road and both the footpaths, that is extremes are being eliminated completely. So what are being selected children? That is only the average size individuals are selected and both extremes are being avoided. For example, when we take our height, okay? So the people of uh, less than four feet or more than seven feet, uh, they are very rare. So we can say that uh, they can be eliminated. And when we take majority of the population will be between four and 5.5 like that. So average sized individuals are being considered under stabilizing selection. When you take plants height, so in certain areas, small plants may not grow or may dry up because they may not get enough sun, sunlight. Next, even of the tall height, they may be subjected to wind damage. So this results in the increase in number of medium height plants. Next, when you take example of a human baby birth weight. So this was a research taken in the foreign countries that is babies of less than five pounds. That is, they have less chance of survival. Next, when you take the babies of more than 10 pounds also have less chance of survival. So only the mean weight uh, of uh, the babies, they will be able to survive. So here, when you take both the extremes are being eliminated and only the intermediate or the average babies are being surviving. Next uh, here, this is uh, the graphical representation children. So both the extremes that is uh, less weight and uh, the more than 10 pounds weight are eliminated and only the intermediate weight uh, children are being surviving. Next, when you take gal flies. So gal flies, when you take uh, the size of the gals, when they are larger, they're eaten by the birds. And if they are smaller, they are eaten up by the wasps. So they have adapted itself to make it size that is the medium. So the medium sized gals only survive and both the extremes that is large size and small size are being eliminated. And when you take, this is uh, the Siberian Husky breed in the snowy area. So if uh, the weight is heavier, it will be sinking in the snow. When it is lighter in weight, it cannot pull the sled. So it is the medium sized children 
and it is having a very st strong leg muscles which is able to survive next the same like uh, snails when you take its color if it is uh, white in color it has been able to uh, eliminate it and uh, when you take here the black color snails they are been camouflaged with the rock so and next when you take the red color snails they are easily been visible so both the white in the white sand and the black color snails in the black rock both are been uh, adapted and suitable to the environment so both the extreme individuals but the intermediates okay so these are been eliminated next when you take the mice of the different colors that is light and dark brown colors they are been eaten more by the predators but when you take the medium brown mice these are been survived from the predation next when you take the cats having a small tail so they will be disturbing its balance and when you take the long tails this will be dragging on the ground so the medium sized tails are been considered next the same example we can apply to the rabbits having the legs too short they cannot uh, run fastly and if they have long legs they cannot turn into the sharp corners so the medium sized rabbits only survive so these are all examples of stabilized selection next when you take the breeders also choose chickens that produce large eggs cows that yield more milk and corns with high protein variety even when you take the inheritance of sickle cell disease that is three possibilities we find that is uh, the normal hba hba and the carriers hba hbs and the recessive hbs hbs so the nature selects the intermediate that is hba hbs heterozygous individuals where the malaria is predominant in that area that is it protects the individuals from malaria so here when you see the graph which has been plotted here the stabilized selection makes the peak of the bell curve even higher than that of the normal so over time intermediate both the intermediate states that is over to the corners of right and left the they become more common and each extreme variety will become lost also in the further time so only the bell shape that is the center part the average phenotypes are able to survive this is a stabilizing selection next we go to directional selection directional selection is called also called as progressive selection so these are most adapted are selected and they move in one direction you can see this picture children this is the original population and here these are been shifting towards either right or left side towards one direction and they are been settling so as they are been moving towards one side that is they are called as directional selection or progressive selection so only the extremes might be right and left are be favored and why directional so that is might be due to the change in environment or migrating to the new areas directional selection will be taking place so these small size and large size are only favored not the intermediate individuals children so they will be moving towards that is might be right or left side and individuals of that type only are carried to the next generations so for example when you take that is the darwin finches so when uh, they are adapted to that area they have been shifted to for example galapagos islands and they have been settled next uh, when you take that is giraffe in the case of giraffes the average value of the length of the neck shifted to long neck next when you take the example that is the development of resistance to ddt by mosquitoes so the the ddt usage started from later 1945 so it was thought to be an effective insecticide against mosquitoes house flies etc but within 2 to 3 years children that is by going on continuously spraying the insecticides 
Uh, the DDT resistant mosquitoes have been developed. Even when you take in our homes also, uh, when you spray insecticides, that all the mosquitoes won't die. That is, they'll be resistant. So, for example, next, uh, when you take peppered moths, that is, uh, the light colored moths, they have been adapting to the rural area and the black colored moths, they have been camouflaged to the black bark of the tree of the polluted area. Birmingham. Even when you take that is uh, the horse example evolution that is from the Ooh hippers that it has been developed to the modern house that is horse hippers. So that is having single single toed foot. So it has been moving to one direction. So this is an example children that is original population. So it has been shifting to either left or right that is uh, might be gray color or to the a brown color that is uh, according to the environment they are been shifting and they are been settling so the graph has been shifting towards one direction so this is called as a directional selection or progressive selection so just see the graph children how it has been plotted next comes the disruptive selection this is also called as centrifugal or diversifying selection here the nature selects the extremes. So here both the peaks are being selected. So it has been called as bimodal. So both the extremes are selected and the intermediates are being eliminated. So it leads to adaptive radiation. For example, when you take uh, the Darwin finches. So the finch birds, according to the environment, they split it to the different areas and they form new species. So disrupt means to, to break into. When you take both the extremes, that is small and the large sized, they have been favored and the intermediates are being eliminated. So these are being adapting to the new environment where they are living and they develop into two different populations completely. So this is the peak children. Here we find two kinds of uh, peaks. So that is uh, towards the two extremes right and left so one and two two peaks are being developed so individuals are favoring towards towards the both extremes and completely eliminating the intermediate types then why what is the reason for disruptive selection so that is due to environmental pollution natural disasters like uh, fire accidents uh, earthquakes and uh, cyclones so due to this uh, the population will be splitting uh, to wherever they are being adapted and they will be surviving their further life. For example, when you take light colored moths of Biston betularia and dark colored, so they will be settling according to the environment like uh, the rural area or the polluted area. Next, when you take the sunflower population in California, it uh, that is having two subpopulation of the dry area and wet area. And if these do not interbreed, and they are completely separated, they form completely a new species. So these are the examples, children, when you take even the robins, uh, the big sized and small sized eggs, they'll be completely broken. So here only the medium size, and that is the example of stabilizing selection. Directional means moths completely moving to an extreme ends or the rabbit colors. So that is moving towards the extremes. This is a diversifying selection. So when you see the selections of the butterflies, children, the same example when we apply to the three types, directional means moving to one direction, stabilizing means towards the center of the graph. So here the stable population is the intermediate individuals and the extremes are eliminated. Disruptive means intermediate types are eliminated and both the extremes are being selected. So these are the three forms of selection, children. That is a disruptive, stabilizing, and directional. And these are the curves. And this is very important for both for your IPE and also the NEAT examination children. They will be asking diagram based and also example based. And they'll be asking under which type of selection does this include? Next comes the gene flow. When you take the population, the population, they have been moving from one place to another. And there is the exchange of gametes. No two individuals are same. They look similar, but still they show variations. There is transfer of gene material by genetic recombination. 
and transfer of chromosomes from mother and father to the offspring is taking place and next when you take that is uh, the movement of alleles from one population to the another is called as gene flow the name itself says flow means movement the movement of alleles from one population to the another is called as gene flow so here when you take the pollinators might be insects or might be wind dust rain or any animals they'll be carrying the pollen from one place to the other for example there may be some hindrances like a valley or ocean or continent which are completely dividing the places so where there is a no chance of interbreeding so this all will be leading to the new species when you take for example people of uh, the sweden they are completely blue eyed next when you take mexican some rural area people so when the sweden people a little part they have been shifted to completely mexican and they are completely been isolated so and when they get interbreeded they get uh, the population of the offsprings of uh, they both mixed only but not of their grandparents next when you take the birds for example they also might be separated might be due to the oceans rivers seas etc they are completely separated from their original population then what do they do so they continue their survival by interbreeding with the population where they are living so they gave give rise to a new species so here children so from this population they have been shifted and they mingle with the new population and they lead to the new species even here the example of the chick when they have been completely separated and there is the gene flow next comes the genetic load the name itself says load so that is uh, the concentration of the existing deleterious genes carrying within the population is called as genetic uh, load when you take an example of uh, sickle cell anemia that is homozygous hbs hbs they usually die early due to anemia but the heterozygous individual children hba hbs that they can live reasonably healthy and exhibit resistance to malaria so this deleterious gene is carried in the heterozygous condition and next when you take many people will be suffering from infertility and childlessness so when people get married in the late ages they will have chromosome defects in the female leg and also in the sperm the dna sequence changes will be taking place in the late ages so the conception rate will be lessened and also though they are been conceiving they will be having the children with genetic defects so this is all about genetic load children next comes the genetic drift genetic drift means when the people are been completely separated from their original population might be the due to the isolation or due to any drastic events it is called as genetic drift so that is random changes in the allele frequency of small population so that is taking place by chance but not by selection it is called as a genetic drift so here when you take in a small population alleles will be lost from one generation when it is been moving to the next but it is been taking place by random chance only so in this way this will be leading to a new population this has been called as genetic drift which has been explained and discovered by swell right so this is called as swell right effect so the genetic drift is also called as swell right effect so then why genetic drift takes place so that is random chance for example in the nature many drastic disasters takes place like uh, uh, completely snowfall and uh, earthquakes floods uh, cyclones etc so this will be disturbing the original population so from the original population many will be dying and a few survivors they will be moving to the another area and uh, only few will be adapted to the new environment so this is called as genetic drift so of this frequencies that is of 1% for example when you take and uh, they are leading a life and if any one any natural disaster takes place 
and uh, the frequencies which are less or low genetic variation these are been eliminated it is not done wantedly but they are been done by chance so this has been eliminated by genetic drift so genetic drift is of two types that is bottleneck and founder effect bottleneck means for example when you take population so population may be getting disturbed by bottleneck events means some disasters so the complete population gets disturbed that is bottleneck effect when you take founder effect founder effect means from the original population when the people are been shifting and isolated completely we find a new population so this is uh, the picture children founder effect from the original population that is by the some event they are moving to the new population and they form new species bottleneck effect so for for example this is the population in the bottle might be some accident earthquakes etc taking place so few are been surviving just see children how many color gems are there so only this many are been surviving and they lead a new species so founder effect so a new population is found are formed that is in a location so just see this was the original population children and here small group of individuals they are been splitted and forming a new life this is called as founder effect so here from the original population they have been shifted these are the founders and now they interbreed and they form a new population and these new population are no way that are been similar to the original population okay so they are been completely different from that of the parent population so here see children parent population they might be migrating due to the different reasons so when you take after a couple of generations we find a new founder population that is completely different from the parent population when you take some examples like islands so they are completely isolated that is reproductively and geographically so they form entirely a new species within no time even when you take birds are also completely been separated and they cannot go to their parent uh, population so they get interbreded with the birds where they stay and they form new species even the galapagos islands birds so they get adapted to the environment where they are living and forming a new species here the same example children moths that is here the brown color moth traveling to the green color and here by the interbreeding they form a new species even when you take children that is the blood group o what does o blood group indicate that is universal donors how many are o positive they are very less so here when you take o positive blood groups that is in the red indians they were nearly 100% then how can we say 100% are red indians that is they might have been shifted in the previous generations that is their forefathers might have been shifted and they have isolated themselves reproductively so there the 100% of the red indians were o positive blood group bottleneck event so here that is uh, when the population size severely decreases it reduces genetic variations it undergoes a bottleneck that is due to natural calamities so here just see the children natural calamities will be disturbing the original population and they forms entirely new population so that is might be due to earthquakes fire accidents cyclones floods etc so from the original population few survivors will form a new population so from the bottleneck from the original population due to the accident earthquake floods only a few survivors they will be moving to a new area and they are surviving this is the bottleneck event even when you take polydactylism that is uh, the amish community in the north america that is uh, they migrate they are been migrated of the europe when you see their fingers they are having six fingers are we having no we are having five fingers so that is a syndrome children and next when we take they are entirely different 
that is uh, they are not living in the buildings they live in the huts and they do not move in cars they move in the chariots that is of the horses so their lifestyle is completely different so this condition is polydactylism and next we go to the speciation so what is species already we have learned children that is group of individuals that interbreed and produce offspring are called as species so species when they are reproductively isolated from one another that is called as speciation so speciation occurs when from a large population few are been reproductively isolated so that is when there is no chance of interbreeding with a large population the small group of population they will be interbreeding within the small group so this leads to the speciation for example when you take the trees like hawthorn and apple trees so the flies uh, when they have been laying x these two groups they will be rarely interbreeding those flies and they form a new species and these are of two types children that is anagenesis and cladogenesis this is very important anagenesis so this leads to a new species in a single lineage but when you take cladogenesis this also will be leading to a new species but it has been dividing so that is diversifying so just see this children so for example when you take giraffe example it has been stretching its neck and also it is four legs towards one direction so this is comes under anagenesis or phyletic evolution so that is a new species has completely developed which is entirely different from their ancestors along a single lineage next one is divergent this is also called as cladogenesis that is a parent species splits into two events just see children species a is giving rise to species b and species c that is a dividing or divergent so this is divergent speciation so why that is as a result of geographic isolation or another driving force so here just see in this picture children anagenesis so here that is leading to a new species only by a single lineage this is anagenesis but cladogenesis this is also leading to a new species but it has been dividing or splitting into two populations here these are the examples of anagenesis this fish it has been reproductively isolated and forming a new species but in a single lineage but when you take here the darwin finch birds here these are been moving in the different directions and giving rise to the different uh, shaped beaks that is comes under the diversifying or cladogenesis evolution so these are the examples even given in your textbook children anagenesis that is the bird giving rise to a new species in a single lineage the bird giving rise to the two different species that is dividing into two different populations is cladogenesis so this evolution of change is again of two types that is gradual abrupt gradual means it is very slow children it may take even hundreds of years abrupt means immediately means by the mutations hybridization etc when you take gradual so it is a very slow ch change this will be including both allopatric and sympatric speciations allopatric speciation allopatric speciation so that is due to the geographic isolation that is they have been separated by a physical barrier might be a river might be a mountain valley or island etc so by these barriers these have been completely isolated and uh, this will be giving rise to the two species from an original one due to geographic isolation so just see the picture children original population here by be by the geographic barrier they have been splitting into the two different populations and these two these will be mating with the individuals where they have been present so these will be giving rise to the new species just see the blue color children that is the new species which is entirely different so here this is the example children that is a uh, 
the founder species. So these have been isolated completely and giving rise to the new species. Next comes sympatric speciation. So these are living in the same geographic area. Sim means together, patria means native land, means in the same native land they are living, but these are being reproductively isolated. So sympatric speciation is the formation of two species from the original, but these are being reproductively isolated though they are in the same geographical location. Okay, so these are reproductively isolated, but still they are in the same geographical location is called sympatric speciation. Here just see the picture children. From the original population itself, they are being isolated and they give rise to the new species is sympatric. So just compare both allopatric means that is they are being completely been separated geographically. But whereas when you take sympatric within the same geographical area, they have been reproductively isolated and both give rise to the new species. Here allopatric means they are splitting into different populations into different geographical habitats. Sympatric means under the same population, they are giving rise to the new species here, when you take the frogs, like the pig frog or the gopher frog, where they're living in the different habitats and they give rise to the species which are completely different. Even when you take some example children, like the American toad, that is which mates in the early summer and the fowler's toad, which mate in the late summer. So by this, we can know that the difference in their mating season shows that they don't interbreed at all. So, Allopatric species, that is, they occur due to the geographic isolation and both species evolve separately. But when you take sympatric population, that is, the random gene changes, they occur in a small population, that is, which reproduce and evolve within the same niche as a separate species. So this is about the speciation children. Next, we go to the brief account of evolution. So when you see about 2000 million years ago, first cellular forms have appeared on the earth. Later, they started to release oxygen and they form from the unicellular to the multicellular organisms, even prokaryotes, eukaryotes have developed. And also we find various invertebrates 500 million years ago, and also the jawless fish 350 million years ago, and also many seaweeds and also the plants 320 million years ago. We also observed uh, the evolution that is fishes with strong fins and also a lobe finned fish that is the coelacanth has also have been appearing that this was the first amphibian which lived both on land and water and also amphibians evolved into reptiles. Some examples like turtles, tortoises and crocodiles and uh, the reptiles form different shapes and sizes and some went back into water and some were on land. When you take the dinosaurs, the biggest dinosaur that is Tyrannosaurus rex, which was nearly 20 feet in height and it had really dagger-like teeth. When you take that is a fish-like reptile that is Istiosaurus, these were all existing in the olden ages and uh, some dinosaurs disappeared and uh, some changed into the mammals and the birds, birds to mammals and they were viviparous. Next, when you take the origin and evolution of the man, this is not a lineage. When you take, there was a very gradual changes. When you take that is evolution of primates, which includes the animals, which was a very slow change. So this is an imitation children. That is uh, the man, how he has been evolved. That is completely bending. And he was been slowly having an erect posture. And now this is the modern man. So let's study the origin and evolution of a man. All are human beings, but all are different. Just see the children, the hair, curly hair, straight hair, blue eyes, green eyes, brown eyes. And here the 
people of different nations yes all are different in appearance and also lifestyle yet all belong to human beings that is the genus homo so whatever they are wherever they are we are all human and we belong to the genus homo then how did we originate how were we before everyone will be anxious to know so let's study the evolution of man so we can study this under three headings children that is prior to ape man and ape man to prehistoric man prehistoric man to the modern man so here when you see first to hominidae so that is they are evolving to dryopithecus later that is australopithecus and uh, homo habilis homo erectus homo sapiens first one is hominidae hominid is a primate of the family hominidae so here this was been about 85 million years ago these were less closely to hominids and distantly related to hominoids so these first evolved in africa and they were having a nearly a large brain size that is encephalization started we can takes place so from the hominids that is uh, came the ape man that is dryopithecus and the ramapithecus dryopithecus when you see the picture children dryopithecus was been discovered in africa this is a genus of ape 15 million years ago they were more ape like bodies been covered by hair and they had a large brain and these are been called as the common ancestors of man and apes and uh, the fossils of dryopithecus were been discovered from the miocene rocks of asia and europe and they ate soft fruits and uh, leaves so they were completely herbivorous children next uh, from dryopithecus ramapithecus uh, have been evolved and ramapithecus the name itself says rama that is the hero of the indian legend and pithecus means ape so these were more man like which appeared 14 to 15 million years ago they walked a little bit erect but yet their body was having hair and these were extinct about 7 to 8 million years ago and uh, the fossils these appeared in the shivalik hills of india and uh, these uh, ramapithecus these people used to eat uh, dry fruits and uh, the seeds next comes that is from the ape man to the prehistoric man that is australopithecus homo habilis and homo erectus first one australopithecus these were the first ape man which appeared 5 million years ago and uh, now they have been shifted to omnivorous children and the brain capacity was 500 cranial capacity they lived in caves and they existed 1.5 million years ago and here when you see the height children of the australopithecus they were of a very little height and these are the fossils of the skulls so this is the australopithecus who was the first ape man and next comes that is homo habilis homo habilis they lived in east africa 2 million years ago we can say that these are the first human like being and their brain capacity has increased that is 700 cc habilis means mentally able or skillful so they used tools of chipped stones they are really capable of making tools children we can appreciate them and also they cared the young ones and they walked like the normal human so these are been called as first human like beings next from the homo habilis comes the homo erectus they are called as erect man which appeared 1.5 million years ago and their cranial capacity was 900 cc and they knew the usage of the fire and they spread through africa and they are the first to leave africa and uh, next comes the homo neanderthalensis and uh, they lived that is 1 lakh to 40000 years ago and uh, they knew to cover their skin with uh, the cloth uh, with uh, the animal's skin 
and also they buried the dead with the flowers and tools and they were having an increase in cranial capacity of 1400 cc and when you see the fossils these are the neander valley in the germany they have been traced out next comes the homo sapiens they appeared 25000 years ago and they spread all over nearly about 10 10000 years ago the cranial capacity was really excellent that was 1450 cc and they lived in africa asia europe and they were of the distinct races like white black mongolian races and the best ancestor of homo sapiens was cromagnon man that is homo sapiens fossilis and uh, He, he was one point eight meters tall, having strong jaws, and he used uh, that is uh, stones, uh, bones, and elephant tusks to make the various tools and the ornaments, and also his body covered with skin, and also different paintings he has done on the caves. So, this is the stages of evolution of man children. That is Dryopithecus, Ramapithecus, Australopithecus, Homo habilis, Homo erectus. homo neanderthalensis and homo sapiens when you see the sequential stages in children this is very important even for your neat so here this is the order that is the stages of the evolution of the man even when you take the cranial capacity dryopithecus the cranial capacity was 400 cc even ramapithecus was 400 but when you see next australopithecus was uh, 450 next homo habilis it was 700 homo erectus that is 800 next the homo sapiens that is increasingly 1600 cc so the man have been developing from the stone age and also they have learned animal husbandry language reading writing and also he has learned different agriculture knowledge and use of clothes and the utensils these are the various skulls of the fossils and they have been shifting to the various places africa europe asia and they shifted to all the places and this is the language development that is uh, the people of the olden days they have been learned by the sign and the low level of uh, the distress high level of distress they used the symbolic languages and the question and answer conversation they have been used to counter uh, the intonations and also when you see that is uh, they have been uh, learning through the lip languages of the mother and also the elders and later they framed the sentences in this way children that is they learn languages also and uh, that is uh, the different agriculture they have learned and also the different cave paintings we observe of the olden days of the cromagnon man and also the modern man of the homo sapiens which are still preserved so children till now we have learned about the mechanics of evolution under that a very important topic hardy weinberg equilibrium and evolutionary forces natural selection gene flow genetic drift genetic load and speciation that is allopatric and sympatric speciations and origin and evolution of a man so this is a small assignment children what is meant by genetic load give an example distinguish between allopatric and sympatric speciations mention the scientific names of ape like and man like earlier primates which man like primate first used hides to cover the bodies discuss the role of different patterns of selections in evolution so children you have learned the evolution of a man from where did you learn children over here from first from that is uh, the dryopithecus ramapithecus how they have been originated we have been learning till the modern man now even when you see we have come from the mother's womb we have been crawling we have crossed the childhood stage now we are all you are all under teenage afterwards you get married you get children then what is uh, the fate of the parent so many children they take their parents and they keep in the old age home that is uh, really very wrong we have to respect our elders 
we have to respect our parents and that is our responsibility that is we have to take care of our parents and also the elders so these were the various attributes I have taken children so i thank satyanarayan reddy sir additional director rajiv sir joint director my principal srinivas principals and coordinators vijay lakshmi madam shailaja madam and also i thank venugopal reddy sir satish sir and also my friends and also the whole webinar team for this opportunity thank you one and all yeah thank you ma it was very very elaborative session and uh, i think the students like they can understand the things that is mechanism of evolution in very scientific way isn't it and also the origin of and evolution of man was also very beautifully and clearly explained students now now it is your turn to complete the notes which you all are maintaining for especially for the webinars okay and if you not able to uh, go along with the flow of the madam again you revisit twice or thrice but see that madam has clearly and beautifully she has explained so better to write a running notes and same thing you study for the exams you'll you'll have guarantee 100% successful will be you will be successful okay now i thank very much prashanti madam because the organic evolution even though it's a dry subject you made it very beautiful and interesting thank you very much ma'am thank you madam yeah uh, so children have a great day thank you one and all okay madam thank you madam